Hi, Caroline. Hold this. Good morning, everyone. So today is Monday, and we have a lot of stuff going on today, which is kind of fun. The first thing, though, that we are gonna do is we do weigh-in day with Tink. Hi, Riley. So Tink is an African giant bullfrog, and when I got Tink, Tink was no bigger than probably a half dollar, and that was just a short time ago. And I had started doing a project with a, a school here in town, Sacred Heart School. And I was gonna be going over there every week and we were gonna start doing data collection. We were gonna weigh and measure Tink to see how quickly and how big Tink would get. Tink, uh, depending on if it's a male or a female, if it's a female, we'll get to be about one and a half pounds. If it's a male, it will get to be about three pounds. So we started our weigh-ins on March 3rd, and at that time, Tink only weighed seven grams. So just a little teeny tiny thing. And we hadn't, start, um, hadn't started measuring Tink. But you can see here that it went uh, in one week, 7.5 grams, and then the next week it doubled to 14 grams. Then, it, oh, guess what? Tilly is moving the camera. Tilly is the, uh, the tortoise. And when Tilly wants to go, she goes. I'm gonna move this cable up here and make it up a little bit higher maybe so she won't get caught in it. She's a funny one. If I move the camera, it'll go whack it, whack a doodle. So here I go. We'll move it so she can get around. Whenever I come into the room, she wants to try to butt up against me so that I will scratch her back. So she's being a goofy little tortoise. So anyway, back to Tink. So we went from 21 grams, and then look at that, it jumped in one week to 42 grams. And then last week she was at, it was at 52 grams. So I'm gonna turn on the gram scale here. Whoop, there goes Tilly again. Tilly is very determined. Move it back here. here. Tilly, I'm not gonna give you a scratch yet. Here we go. This is Tilly. There's Tilly, wanting attention. Okay, but it's not your time, Tilly. So you go over there. So we're gonna get out Tink. There's Tink. Look at that, isn't he beautiful? And I'm gonna put Tink on the scale here. Oops, this isn't giving me an accurate reading here. I'm gonna put it down here on the floor. Gotta clear it out. All right, Tink today weighs, drum roll, 77 grams. So in one week, so what's today's date? 77 grams went from 52 grams to 77 grams in one week. Isn't that amazing? So then what I will do later is I will set Tink on this graph paper and then we'll be able, because it's quarter inch graph paper, we'll be able to determine the, the length and width of Tink. So I'm gonna set Tink back in his habitat right now. One of the Russian tortoise, Cheeseburger, and that one's Cheeseburger's Walking, 
and then this is Georgia, the box turtle, and then there's Tilly, the leopard tortoise. Now, last week, I showed you my ball python Lucille. So here's my little snake thing, just for anybody who's a little bit nervous, because last week, I'm not gonna bring out the actual snake, but the snake did shed. I had told you that her eye was blue and I brought her out so that you could see that she was blue. So I knew that she was gonna be shedding soon and I was hopeful that we would get a really good shed in one big giant piece instead of a bunch of little pieces that she typically does. So I had the humidity up really high in her little box and everything and Saturday night I saw her rubbing her chin and when she rubs her chin, I know she's getting ready to shed. So I put in this big log in there that is a little bit rougher so that she could rub up against that. And about an hour later, I went up to check on her and look what we got. We got one big shed. And I'm so excited about it because not only is it one beautiful shed, but even the eye caps are on the shed and you can see her mouth. Look at that, isn't that awesome? So I am really excited to have this fantastic shed from my ball python, Lucille Ball. So we've got that. Now, we talked last week too about uh, monarch butterflies and the things that we're gonna prepare for doing that. And I had mentioned that I knew a lot of people were doing takeout and that the takeout containers are great. They're great for doing butterflies when you have the little eggs and the caterpillars and then you'll move them into um, a mesh container later. But I said they could also be great for doing seeds and that's what we're gonna do today as well. So you see here I have just a deli tray and this is gonna make a perfect little greenhouse. So I have some paper towels that I have in here. And what I will do is I will mist it down, which is spring water, and then I can put my seeds in there. Now I have a whole bunch of different seeds, but ones that we're gonna do right now are the snap peas. Now peas and beans are the perfect ones to start with if you're doing this with kids. So you can either plant it in something like this and see the roots and then you're gonna transfer it into the soil or you can put it in like a clear plastic bottle. I have a water bottle here and this can also be a greenhouse. You can cut it in half almost and have it kind of like a flip top or you can take it all the way off and then just set it back on and kind of like squish it in. And this makes a little greenhouse too, but then you can put the seeds closer to the edge and you can watch the roots as they're growing. And this is big enough that if you wanted to use it as a planter, you could, as long as you have about, oh, I'd say about eight inches of soil in there, that's really good. You can put it in then like a decorative planter or something like this. Um, this I would use for things like beans that are a bush style. I tend to like ones that are pole beans so they grow up. So I will be transferring those to a trellis later on. But you can use all of these things. You can even use a milk one as, as, a, as a little mini greenhouse. You don't have to go out and buy a fancy greenhouse. You've got this. You take the cap off for ventilation and it's, it's really nice. So what I will do is I will open up my, my, I love snap peas. They rarely do they make it into the house. And so then I'm just going to sprinkle my peas into that. And then I'm gonna take another paper towel and I'm just gonna fold it over on it. And I'm going to mist that now. And then I can put the lid on. And then with me, you're going to be checking this. We'll check it and we'll see 
if it's starting to grow. So that's one of those little things that you can do with your kids. Or even if you want to just do it yourself, of course you can do that. So if you've just made a nice little greenhouse here to start your plants germinating. Now there are some plants that don't like to have their roots disturbed. So one of the things that I do, again, we have what millions and millions of rolls of toilet paper in our house right now, and we're not going through it nearly as fast, I'm sure. But if you take the tubes and you cut them to about, oh, I'd say about two and a half inches, and then you put them all together in a tray, Again, these little deli trays are really handy. So you fill one of these up and then you put the soil in it and then you put your seed in there. So then when it starts to grow and it's finally ready to take plants outside, all you have to do is take this and you just plant it right into the ground because it's biodegradable. It breaks up and you don't disturb the roots at all. So it's just a really easy thing that you can, can do. Also, sunflowers are another really good, happy thing to plant right now. Uh, you can eat the seeds later, but I know a lot of birds do a really good job of that, and so do the squirrels and raccoons and everything else. Um, but sunflowers, and you can get them in all different sizes. You can get the really, really tall ones that will grow, you know, 10 feet tall, or you can get smaller ones. For the monarch butterflies, one of the plants that I found that I absolutely love, especially for the fall when they're getting ready to migrate, is Tithonia. Tithonia is a Mexican sunflower. Now, you can also get these in different sizes as well. I like the one that kind of, uh, it grows to be a bush about five feet by five feet, and it's very filled with these beautiful flowers. It is a butterfly magnet. I really, really love these particular um, sunflowers. It, now, where I live, it is an annual, so they don't grow back every year. You would have to either buy new seeds or collect the seeds. They're very prickly, so you have to be careful when you're uh, getting the seeds. Talking about getting seeds, oh, I have to show you. So these are bean seeds that I collected from plants that I grow. So I plant the pole type beans I will can a bunch of the beans and when I get tired of canning, I let them dry up and I collect them so that I have some for it the next year. So, anyway, I hope that you will start a little garden with your littles um, or, you know, just enjoy it for yourself. I was looking around my yard and when it gets nice, I will take you out into my garden so you can see because my yard I created uh, initially as a habitat. I wanted to attract a lot of different types of animals. I even really wanted the snakes and yesterday I was so happy because I finally saw my first garter snake of the year. It never chose where I had built a little place I put some little craggy rocks and was hoping for the snakes to be there. Instead it goes underneath of my, my uh, cement step to go into the back of the house. So, but I was so happy I got to see my first garter snake yesterday. Um, sit out in your yard, see what you can, you know, really find. Um, later this week, I'm gonna be giving you an example of how you can really start to hone those observation skills with your kids by setting aside a little piece of your property that you don't do anything to, just to be able to watch and see what's going on. There's so many things happening in nature right now. Get outside, bud break is happening, which is the buds have been so tight and it's warming up that they're starting to break open and you're it's almost kind of like popcorn starting to open up. Uh, so go around and take a look at some of those things. Start planning your gardens for this year and, and, and enjoy nature. Okay, I want to thank you guys for joining me today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is a story day, 
and we will be reading from Kipling's Just So Stories. And then on Wednesday, we'll do a little more nature stuff. On Thursday, then we're going to read another story to kids. And then Friday, uh, again, some more nature stuff. So thank you guys for joining me. Remember to like and to share your love of nature. Thanks. Love you guys. Bye-bye.